الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد continuing in our studies of aqidah wasatiya by Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah and after mentioning in detail or in general about the creed of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah Shaykh Al Islam began which is the tariqah to Ahlul Sunnah after mentioning the mujmil or the general to then go into the detail about those aqidah issues where Ahlul Bid'ah tends to do the opposite in fact Ahlul Bid'ah a lot of times they leave things general so then that leaves a lot of area for ambig- ambiguity in which they can deviate and create and, and cause others to deviate wa'iyadhu billah min dhalika so shaykh al-islam after talking about al-asma'i wa sifat the divine names and attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and talking about iman the pillars of iman as we mentioned in the hadith of jibril alayhi salatu wasalam and tu'mina billahi wa malaykati wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa liyawm al-akhir wa tu'minu bi qadri khayrihi wa shar then the Shaykh began to talk about the the last pillar of Iman belief in the Qadr, the divine decree of Allah wa ta'ala. and Shaykh al-Islam said Rahimahullah Ta'ala he said وَتُؤْمِنُوا الفرقة الناجية من أهل السنة والجماعة بالقدر خيره وشر والإيمان بقدر على درجتين كل درجة تتضمن شيئين قال الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية الفرقة الناجية because again عقيدة واسطية is talking about الفرقة الناجية is talking about the عقيدة the creed of أهل السنة والجماعة not أهل بدع not أهل زندقة not أهل كفر not أهل شرك وغير ذلك قال الشيخ الإسلام الفرقة الناجية the saved sect أهل السنة والجماعة they believe in the قدر they believe in the divine decree. Why? Because it came from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As we just mentioned in the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu wa sallam, and there's so many ahadith mentioned in the Qadr. But however, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also warned us not to go too in depth about the Qadr and pondering about those things which have no benefit for us to go into great depth in trying to explain and trying to figure out about those things which are the umur al those things which are knowledge of the unseen which we don't have knowledge about because it's the unseen but we believe in it we believe in it in accordance with kitab Allah wa sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the salaf of this ummah so Shaykh al-Islam said he said, the Firqa to Najiyah, the safe sect of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, believe in the Qadr, the divine decree, both the good and the evil of it. There are two stages of having faith in Qadr, and each stage includes two factors. Then he began, and he said, the first stage is faith in the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the creature, and the creature's actions which are within his internal knowledge subhanahu wa ta'ala and he has the attribute of this knowledge meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, possesses this he is alim alim you know he is has knowledge of all things and nothing escapes his knowledge and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this attribute of knowledge from the beginning and will have it throughout eternity meaning he possesses this attribute of being al alim throughout eternity he knows all things his knowledge encompasses all the obedience, sins, livelihood, and the times that people's death is appointed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recorded the fates of the people in Allah al Mahfuz. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First of all, Allah created the pen and then said to it, 
write. And the pin said, what should I write? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, write out all that is destined to take place up until the day of judgment. Whatever has been fixed for man cannot be missed, and whatever has been missed cannot have been fixed for him. So everything happens in accordance with the divine decree of Allah. Nothing escapes the qadr. Your risk, your wealth, your livelihood, those sins that you committed, the toba that you made, all of the things that you do, what you did last night, what you'll do tomorrow, everything is within the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's something we have to know. The person who you thought you were going to marry, it was not destined for you to marry them. The person that you married, it was destined that you marry them. And all of those things are within the divine decree of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, tabarak wa ta'ala. That has to do with the divine decree of Allah. And the Shaykh said, the pins are dry and the papers are rolled up. And this is in accordance with the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rufiya al-Aqlam wa Jaffat al And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was mentioning that the Qadr, it, it, it's been written. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Know you not that Allah knows all that is in the heaven and on the earth? Verily, it is all in the book. Verily, that is easy for Allah. And that was Surah Al-Hajj, verse 22, uh, verse 70. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, No calamity befalls on the earth or is in yourselves, but it is inscribed in the book of decrees. al Al-Mahfuz. Before we bring it into existence. Verily, that is easy for Allah. And that's Surah Al-Hadid, verse 22. The fate which is obedient to Allah is sometimes in holistic terms and sometimes in detail. So he wrote in a safe tablet whatever he wishes to write, whatever he wished to write. And when he creates the fetus, before blowing the spirit into it, he sends an angel towards it and gives it four commands. He is told to write all about its livelihood, its death, its deeds, whatever it is, uh, whether it is uh, wretched or whether it is blessed. The extremist of the sect of the Qadariyah. So that also comes in accordance with the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he was talking about the divine decree and all of that is basically a paraphrase of the Nas that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, mentioned that when in the Ahadakum The hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu said, In ahadakum li ya'malu amala ahla jannah hatta la tukun baynahu wa baynaha wa baynahu dhira'an fa yusbiku alayya al-amal O kama qala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Where the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said that verily one of you will be brought together in the stomach of his mother 40 days then he will become uh, a morsel of flesh then he will become or he'll become a blood clot then he'll be a morsel of flesh then he'll be uh, uh, after a morsel of flesh then he'll be and then a soul the soul will be blown into him and that Four things will be commanded for him to write. That the, the angel will write these four things, and this was in a in accordance with the nas of what Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said. It comes from this hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We yomir bi arba kalimat bi katiba riskihi wa 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 ajlihi wa amalihi shakiyan or saeed. So these four things, as we mentioned, will be written by the, the angel. He's told to write about its livelihood, its death, its deeds, and whether it will be righteous or wicked, or happy or sad. All of those things are written in accordance with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of that defines the first 
uh, stage of the Qadr as we as Shaykh al-Islam divided it into those two stages and he also mentioned the extremists of the sect of the Qadriya they refused to accept this element of the Qadr uh, however, there are few of them that exist today. This is one of the, one of these sects of the extreme Qadariya, those who divide. They are like the Mu'tazila, and those who agreed with them. Their belief is that Allah the Exalted has enjoined the slaves to do good and forbidden them from evil. He doesn't know his obedient slaves from among disobedient, but after committing the good and bad deeds. So basically they deny what? They deny the knowledge, the ilm of Allah. So instead, as we mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of his divine attributes is that he is al-alim. And so they, the this sect of the, the Qadariya, they deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ilm, his knowledge, that he is al alim But instead they say everything is decreed and Allah doesn't know until after it happens. Wa'iyadhim billah min dharaka. And that's jahil, that's ignorance, and that's zandaka. The second stage, Shaykh al-Islam mentioned, rahimahullah ta'ala, regarding the Qadr. He said the second stage is that it is the will of Allah. So this has to do with the will of Allah. All these are, uh, the ulama break it into four maratib. Many of the ulama, when they discuss the Qadr, they say it's of arba maratib. It's of four uh, different aspects of the Qadr. The, the ilm, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we just mentioned. And now we're at the stage where he's talking about the will. Of the you know that that everything is in accordance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will. So Shaykh al Islam rahimahullah ta'ala he said the second stage is that it is the will of Allah which is in force in everything, and it is his power which includes everything. And to have faith that whatever Allah will took place, and whatever he did not will did not happen, and whatever motion and the absence of it is in the heavens and the earth is all because of the will of Allah and his control and whatever he does not will does not take place and that Allah the glorified controls everything whether it is in existence or it is absent meaning non-existent there is nothing in the heavens and the earth which has not been created by Allah the exalted and that's another maratib of the Qadr that we were just talking about that the ulama described that uh, al-khalq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything Allah knows everything Allah created everything Allah everything it is in accordance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will uh, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has power over everything there's nothing in the heaven and earth which has not been created by Allah the exalted except Uh, or, or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no other creator besides him and no other Lord despite this he has commanded his slaves to obey him and his messengers alayhim afdal salatu wasalam and has forbidden them from disobedience Allah likes the pious the virtuous and the just ones and is pleased with those who have faith and do good deeds he does not love the, un the those who disbelieve in him nor is pleased with the corrupt those who are corrupt and Ty tyrannical and evil nor does he allow the ob obscene acts so Allah does not love that you commit wickedness and mischief but he does allow it this is another aspect of the Qadr because the Mashiach that everything is under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's divided into two types Mashiach Qawniya wa Mashiach Shari'iyah Mashiach Qawniya meaning the, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which relates to everything that is happening is going to happen and nothing escapes that decree the other type of will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Mashiach Kauniyah meaning those things which Allah is pleased with meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows for people to disbelieve there are people as we know people who believe and there's people who disbelieve there's people who do sins and there's people who try to restrain from sins there's people who make tawbah and, 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 and repentance and there's people who persist in sin and wickedness all of that is under the Mashiach Kauniyah the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is uh, his will which has to do with everything in existence that everything that is happening is in accordance with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it could not escape his will subhanahu the other aspect is the shari'iyah the koniyah uh, uh, the, the mashiyah koni, uh, shari'iyah which has to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine will of those things that he loves for example, Allah loves when a person becomes Muslim. Allah loves when a person 
embraces the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah loves when a person leaves sin to come to khair. Allah loves when a person has good manners and good akhlaq and adab. Allah loves when a person uh, leaves bid'ah to come to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. All of those are with, uh, in accordance with the divine will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the, the will uh, shari'iyah. And so, the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have the real choice to act, and Allah is the creator of the act. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created our actions, but Allah gave us a type of free will. Okay, so they a, peop, a person can choose whether to do good or choose to do evil. They can choose to persist in sin or they can choose to give up sin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless be of those who give up sin, I mean. And there are all kinds of slaves, believer, disbeliever, virtuous, wicked, observer of prayers and fasting, and those who leave it. The slaves have power over their deeds, and they have intention. Allah is the creator of their power and their intention. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created our intention, our niyyah, and He created our ability to, to do good deeds or do bad deeds. But He gave us that type of free will. Meaning that we have some power over our deeds and we have intention. Although Allah created the deeds and Allah created the intention. This is incredibly important because many of the firqa, the dalal, many of the misguided groups, they went astray with regards to the qadr and they denied it. As we mentioned, the, uh, the qadriya and the mu'tazila uh, from amongst them, the jabariya, those who believe we're forced to do the deeds and are destined so we, need to, so we don't have to worry about doing actions. If you're doing wicked deeds, that's because that was decreed for you and you have no choice. And if you're doing good deeds, that's because that was decreed for you and you have no choice. That's the false misconception and false aqidah and creed of the jabariya. And this is also a denial of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, decree and his justice, his adl subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the creator of their power and of their attention, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, to whomsoever among you wills to walk straight, and you will not unless it be that Allah wills the Lord of the Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord, the Rabbil Alameen, Lord of everything that exists. The Qadriya, the qadriya in general refuse to accept this stage of predestination, whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has given the title of Majus of this Ummah. On the contrary, from among those who believe in predestination, there is a group which exaggerates, so much so that it denies all power and authority of the slaves and excludes them from the acts of Allah and His command. So that shows you the, dis the, the, the misguidance, the kufr, and the deviance with regards to the qadr that many of the sects went astray with. The Prophet Sallallahu said, قَدَّرَ اللَّهُ مَقَادِيرَ الْخَلَائِقِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَخْلُقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بِخَمْسِينَ أَلْفْ سَنَةِ وَكَانَ عَرْشِهُ عَلَى الْمَاءِ this is incredibly important. This is a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which you find where? You find it in Muslim. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in this authentic hadith, he said, 50,000 years before the creation of the earth and the heavens, Allah determined the fate of, his, of the creatures, of His creatures, when His throne was on the water, meaning Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's throne was on the water in a manner that suits His Majesty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We believe in this because it came in the authentic hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the first thing Allah created was the pen. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another uh, authentic uh, narration, in uh, Sunan Abi Dawood, Qala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِنَّ أَوَلَ مَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ الْقَلَمْ قَالَ لَهُ أُكْتُبْ قَالَ وَمَا أُكْتُبْ وَمَا أُكْتُبْ قَالَ أُكْتُبْ مَا هُوَ كَائِنْ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ The Prophet Sallallahu said as reported in Sunan Abi Dawood He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the first thing Allah created was the pen he asked it to write, and the pen asked, what should it write about? Allah asked him, asked it to write out whatever is determined to take place up until the Day of Judgment. So that shows us, that's where Shaykh al-Islam, and you notice, this is the tariqah to Ahl al-Sunnati wal -Jama ah. Not only is this treatise from Ahl al-Sunnati wal -Jama ah, but this is the way, the minhaj and the methodology of Ahl al-Sunnah, is that they, they take their aqidah and creed, 
from the Quran and the Sunnah. This is how they 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 they, they their their statements, their ibarat, when they're speaking, when they're giving lectures, when they're doing uh, 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 giving small words of encouragement or preaching or doing the jumu khutbah. They're coming from Kitabillah wa Sunnah al Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They're coming from the nusus, from the Qur- Quran. Which is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the madhab of Ahlul Sunnah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be from Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah and bless us to be of benefit to his slaves subhanahu wa ta'ala and bless us to be on our good scales on the day of judgment when nothing else is going to benefit us. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.